American University in Bulgaria. Um, and I uh, say that it was a very rational deci decision, I guess, because we have uh, exceptional speakers tonight, and you are going to learn about uh, strategy and entrepreneurship in action firsthand. So uh, let me uh, present the partners, the creators of uh, a very successful uh, company that has been created more than 10 years ago. Um, we have with us uh, Krum Kajidogi and Peter Schwartz. Please help me welcome them. <laughs> and now I'll just uh, let you know that there is a sign up sheet. You have to write your name in it so that it's taken into account for other kinds of purposes. But besides that, enjoy the presentation and um, those very generous people. Thank you. Hi, guys. They told me to stand up. Uh, I don't know whether you can see this. Uh, we prepared some slides so that we don't forget <laughs> why are we here for. Uh, but thank you for coming. I was expecting less people. Uh, so my name is Krum, uh, and I, I graduated this school at the year 2000, uh, basically. Immediately after that, we started Melon. Uh, but it, 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 didn't start, it didn't start like that. Uh, but in any way, uh, we, Peter and I are here today to just give you a little bit of an idea what Melon is, very quickly, uh, to tell you how it all started, uh, what happened uh, then, and what is going on now. Uh, then Peter uh, will take some minutes to tell you a little bit about what it is uh, for you to be a young entrepreneur. Uh, and don't have kids and mortgages and stuff like that. And then uh, I do hope that this is going to take really short time so that you can ask questions and uh, maybe point uh, where and what is interesting for you uh, to know and uh, what do you think about starting up a company and then just getting some sanity check from us. Uh, so what is Melon? Uh, this is something that uh, we call a mission statement. Actually, this came out really late in our history. It was always there, but we decided to give it some form. Actually, Peter was one of the guys that uh, started this process. Uh, just to give you an idea, why is this so important? Uh, because it, hello, it defines you. Uh, it just gives you an idea of why are you doing this all, and. Uh, I will not read it loud, but I will just say that Melon is a software company, and uh, as such, we have been uh, doing software and everything related to the software. Uh, with the years, uh, we ended up being 145, 150 people. You can just put the new, the new slide. Uh, and at the moment, uh, most of what we do is basically in this slide. Uh, we have three uh, main business lines. One of them is software services. Uh, this is basically the evolution of Melon. This is uh, custom software development, outsourcing projects, big, big software solutions. And uh, we do this for um, around three types of customers. You can summarize this one is enterprise customers. This is uh, big companies like Coca-Cola. Uh, and they want us to help us help, help them build some pieces of software that improves their business, improves their process, uh, helps them sell more or spend less and things like that. Uh, then we have a lot of startup companies that use us as a technology partner. Uh, as you know, in entrepreneurship, especially in high-tech IT entrepreneurship, uh, the technical part is very, very important and most of the people are lucky to have technical partners, founding partners like uh, we did at Mellon, uh, but some don't. Um, 
In this case, uh, startup companies are mostly based in London. They have gone through some rounds of investment and uh, got some equity, uh, gave some equity away for some uh, money from investors. Uh, and then they use this uh, money to get us help them with the technology. Uh, that's basically one third of what we do in, in the services division. Then we have the outsourcing. Uh, this is purely cost-based, uh, good value for money uh, for companies from the States, from London, from Western Europe that just hand us long, big projects that uh, we help them deliver. In all three cases, it's about software where you utilize your knowledge and uh, your uh, experience to deliver uh, nice software solutions. Then we have Mellon Mobile, uh, it's sister brand, it's the same company, uh, but uh, we brand it differently because it's a separate story. It is uh, our mobile applications business, uh, which comes from our merger with WebGate, uh, about which I'll discuss a bit later. And uh, this is where and how we market and sell our uh, mobile apps. Uh, some numbers are here, uh, you could read them later, but uh, in short, this is uh, one, our basically major product line, B2C uh, product line, business to customer. Then we have Mellon Learning. Uh, this started as a project. Later on, it evolved uh, when we gathered a lot of knowledge, vertical knowledge about what e-learning is, uh, how to sell it, what is needed uh, for the customers. Uh, at the moment, this is a business line. We have a product family of our own, plus a team that uh, handles uh, some supporting services. Uh, E-learning, uh, Mellon Learning would be a solution for corporate clients to install a learning management platform in their company and then manage the process of learning and training. Like they usually are required and some are uh, voluntary uh, developing a huge and very sophisticated training programs and curriculums uh, to, to improve the quality of their people. Uh, so the platform tracks what happens there. It tracks the users and tracks uh, the courses and then collects this information and produces some decent reports to the management or to the HR people. Then alongside with this, we've created some authoring tools that uh, help people that don't have the technology, uh, the technical know-how to create content internally. And then we have some design people who know how to structure this content so that it's more appealing and people supposedly remember more. Uh, that's it in a nutshell. That's what we, what we do. Uh, at the moment, that's our major business uh, and our products are hopefully and potentially um, going to uh, surpass this as revenue, size, scope and success, so to say. Uh, so, that's today. How it all started, if you can. Ah, super. Now is the simple slides where I could talk a lot, but I'll try to be short. Uh, in 2000, uh, actually Mellon started as three separate, four separate, separate companies. Uh, today it's one. Uh, the one that I come from is Adventure. Uh, we, started, we started up in 2000 together with uh, two other partners, Mustuna, he is a celebrity here, I think most of you know it, <laughs> and Valio, who is pretty much unknown uh, anywhere, uh, but he's currently with Melon, Mustuna is not anymore. Uh, but the three of us uh, started the company right after we graduated. But what were the options that we had? So what, what, what was my personal uh, choice in the beginning? So uh, when I was junior and and then a senior, I was working part-time for AmCham, the American Chamber of Commerce. And it was, uh, I was thinking that this was the, the in intermediate step to my career as an auditor. And uh, this was very fashionable back then, like companies like PwC, uh, KPMG, Deloitte, uh, they were like dream employers to, to the students back in my, in my uh, years. And I was a fan and also I was good in accounting and I, I still keep uh, good uh, friends with Alf Istegard here. Uh, and that I was doing the job of an accountant assistant in Amcham. And then for two years I was driving every Tuesday and every Friday to Sofia and back and working some really stupid bookkeeping. Uh, but this was uh, what I did and it made some money. 
uh, for me, so I was feeling comfortable. And then I saw that my options were to start working for some of these companies that were then Amcham members like uh, PwC and uh, Amcham uh, members like um, industrial companies, some smaller ones, uh, but basically corporate customers for payroll. And I didn't like that. After the two years of driving back and forth and seeing these people and helping them organize their general assembly meetings, all of a sudden I decided that I, I don't like that. So the other option uh, was to go and get some MBA somewhere out of Bulgaria or, uh, or just leave the country and look for opportunities elsewhere. And the third option was to just start up something. Uh, <coughs> and I didn't know what, but I, I knew that I just wanted to start up my own company. And then there is this opportunity uh, coming from friends and acquaintances in Amcham, uh, but uh, Interpret, I don't know whether you know this building, it's an office center, one of the first office centers. Uh, the International World Trade Center uh, wanted some multimedia presentation. And they gave us the opportunity to give it a try. And that was actually our first project. I needed someone who knew video, and I needed someone who had the photography eye. So it was Mustun and Valio. And uh, we did this project and we liked it. And then a new project followed and a new project followed. And all of a sudden we see an investor on our door. Uh, but that's bullet number four. Elsewhere in Paris, uh, three other guys from AOBG, uh, same class, uh, Tony, Vasco, and Stanley, uh, were working on a project for a real estate company, online project, called Direct Gestion. I'm not a first-hand, uh, I don't have first-hand experience for this period, but I know that it was a project, like ours, only bigger and more of a software. The three guys were cost majors, and <laughs> none of us three from Adventure were uh, cost majors. So, uh, these guys were starting this project then, and they were working on their own company. Uh, and that's how Weblang started, another AOBG startup. And then one year later, uh, after actually the first project we did here in, in the multimedia lab, in, in the big building, uh, we, we, we was, which is not allowed, but Mostuna had the key, and, uh, <laughs> and the building manager in Volga uh, also gave us access to uh, sleep there where Mustuna also put some uh, connections, but <laughs> please, we will cut that from the video. Uh, uh, but then we were spending the whole summer here, uh, spending pretty much day and night in the multimedia lab and then out brainstorming what to do. And uh, basically we didn't have n no clue what is going on, but we knew that we need to deliver a multimedia product at the end. Uh, and uh, there was this European Championship uh, behind underground in the Rusalka, where we were eating and watching matches, and then back to work. So this was the summer of 2000. In 2001, Bull Ventures, which is another AOBG startup, uh, or was back then, uh, they wanted to be the first VC in Bulgaria, which is focused on IT companies and software companies. So it was Nikolai Nikolov, uh, it was Dani Tomov, it was Angio Nikolov, Atsata, and uh, it was Mira. Mira Ivanova, now. Uh, <laughs> friends and family, how, <laughs> basically. Uh, Mira is now the wife of uh, one of our partners, Ivo. Anyway, they, they came to us, they also went to Weblink, and they also went to another company, and they invested in the three of them. And along the way, uh, we became Melon, the four companies. The fourth one is Webgate. It has uh, no connection to AOBG. It was the third investment of Bull Ventures, which later on decided that they will just focus the three companies on the three companies and stop with this VC stuff because it was not the right time, I think. And uh, they, they pursued other opportunities, but they are still our partner at Mellon. So that's how it all started. Uh, no, just bring it back. Uh, just some cr chronological uh, big milestones. So in 2001, uh, we were not already Value Mustun and Krum, but we, we registered the company, uh, we got some cash with which we bought a video camera, some photo uh, cameras, some lenses, and I think we spent the whole investment with this. Uh, and then uh, Web Link, Tony Vasco and uh, Stanley got 
another investment and they were spending it in hiring people, mostly from AOBG. And then uh, between 2001 and 2003, uh, we had some common projects with Weblink. And it was very, very natural and Bull Ventures pushed it because they thought, uh, mostly uh, they thought that it will create more value. If we just put the two things together. And in 2003, this happened. Uh, and uh, it happened basically seamlessly. And one of the main reasons for that was the fact that the Paris crew and Adventure uh, were all from the same background. We were basically friends from school and from the university. We were thinking the same. We were speaking the same language, this broken Bulgarian, broken English, if you know it. Uh, and it was just easy. Uh, we got Evo from Wiscom, if you've heard Wiscom. Wiscom is what is now VMware Bulgaria. It's another AOBG startup. Uh, he was the CEO there, and he came and became our CEO. Uh, he's still at the company, uh, and uh, he's leading mobile, mobile, and also he's a business development manager and a partner. In 2003, uh, we didn't merge with WebGate, uh, although there was this idea. That's the year when they decided to stop being a software website developer uh, and decided to focus on mobile. They decided that this is their new strategy and, they, and a merger or anything like this will distract them from their new idea. So four years later, it was very natural that uh, Melon, when we merged, we became Melon Technologies, uh, the first in 2003. And in 2008, uh, WebGate, were one of the leading uh, developers of mobile applications for Nokia, for Symbian. Uh, they created some landmark products like Advanced Core Manager, uh, Battery Saver, uh, Advanced Device Locks, and things that are famous in this world. And that was the, the age before the iPhone. So in 2008, it was already a year when, when we had this iPhone phenomenon. And uh, we decided that, uh, that it is a very good idea for two companies to merge again uh, and to invest in uh, spreading uh, the development expertise to the other incoming major platforms, which were then BlackBerry, it was iPhone, uh, iOS, it was uh, uh, Windows, and then it was uh, Android a bit later. So we invested with the whole headcount now being something like 70 people. Uh, we decided that this is it, and this is the thing that is going to make the company really explode. Uh, and at the same time, uh, the rest, the services division, will help maintain and grow as well organically as it was before. So since 2008, we are basically having this mobile division building our own applications, also growing the services division, uh, which is still bigger than the products division. Uh, and uh, we also uh, designed this uh, learning product line separately. Uh, so we have what was on the previous slide. Uh, but that's basically how Melon formed. Uh, in terms of growth, uh, now three rounds of investment separate uh, events, uh, and two mergers is a nice way to grow. But I would say that it was a natural, organic growth all over and all the way. So we've been adding more people and adding more expertise and more teams and more uh, um, technical expertise uh, with the years. So we've been cash positive and slowly, organically growing to become what is today Melon and what is a team of 100 and almost 50 people, uh, which is big when you think of it and when you see them on the corporate party. Uh, so, <clears throat> what I think are the key ingredients, of course there is a list of 1,000 more, uh, but these that just came to my mind first, and I think that when it's the first, then these must be important ones. Uh, the first one is that uh, after 12 years, for me, uh, it is a marathon, it's not a sprint, so you need to consider this when you decide whether to go forward and try something. If it starts, then you need to start it as it's a, a marathon. It's not a one day or a one week or a one month, although it could happen very easily. But you need to really have this long-term perspective in mind. 
it helps you design and approach clients, partners, employees uh, in a little bit different way. Uh, so when a, when you start thinking of it long term, the short term wins become irrelevant if you want to invest in long term clients, in long term partnerships, if you want to build a relationship. You need to build it as if it's going to last 100 years and more. And uh, that's been helpful for us. That's been uh, very useful for us. And that's a philosophy that helped us retain pretty much all customers uh, that uh, we have at the moment for the services division. Customers for the mobile, mobile is a different story, but that's a philosophy that uh, helps us have people as uh, Peter, who is our fifth and, uh, second employee and a partner at Mellon, uh, and he's been with us basically from day one. Uh, in the multimedia lab, he was playing with Flash as well. Uh, I don't know how he had the key, but I know how Mostuna had the key. Then, uh, I think that the second one is something that you don't realize yet, uh, but you have been brainwashed here. You have this culture and you have this mindset that we have, and uh, it's there, and when you see people uh, sharing this mindset, uh, you can feel it and, and, and you can work easier and much, much faster and much, you connect on a different level with, with people that share this mindset and this culture. Uh, and it is um, the democracy culture of the liberal arts education, I think, uh, but it's there. It helps us really easy to work with customers in, in the States, in, in, in the UK, and it is showing the difference, you can feel the differences uh, when you, for example, work with customers in Germany. They are also capitalist society, but it's different, you can feel it. And you know that you share this and you know that it's easier if you work with people like this. That's why the first merger with Weblink became basically seamlessly. And the second one had some, we needed some time to adjust and to, to, to fit in uh, within the different company cultures because the WebGate guys, uh, they were great, but they were just a little bit different on many levels that are basic. And this is, this is something that I think helped Mellon be what it is today. And it is mostly, I think the AOBG culture kind of prevailed a little bit and we still have it. Although it changed a bit, but we still have it. So I would say that Mellon might be considered an AOBG company. Then the third one, which is basically the first one, uh, but that's how they came and I didn't edit it. Uh, friends and partners, uh, which is the same. Uh, we started as friends. Uh, most of us are still uh, in the company. Uh, some of us, uh, Mustuna is uh, freelancing and doing his own other startups, but we're friends. We drink wine at the moment uh, together. Uh, and Stanley is in Google in New York, and uh, other guys have other opportunities, but most of the partners that started the three companies are still at the company. Uh, and then uh, it's a long-term, it's a long-term thing, thing as well. Uh, and it is, this, this is very important. You can, uh, Peter has also something in his slides about you cannot do it alone. I share that, I think that alone is, uh, alone is bad, alone is not good. Uh, Find someone to just be with you if you start uh, if you start up something, share uh, something to, something to have. Uh, you, you just need to have to share things to to have this as a motivate motivation to uh, to continue to to have a partner or a friend to just give you some constructive criticism and tell you things right in the face. That's necessary. If you're alone, I think it's the, the harder path. So uh, I, I believe that democracy is better than authoritarian regime. Uh, and then the, the last thing, which is really uh, something a lot of people don't realize, but let's do it is very, very easy, especially if you're on that age. It, it's super easy. You just need to start and don't be afraid to fail. Uh, failure is experience, it's not a, a black mark on your resume. Failure is good, especially if, it, if you realize it fast and if it's not huge and very public, but still it's good. Uh, and, and that's something I see in Bulgaria is, uh, is still not present. Uh, the culture of uh, 
of uh, punishing failure rather than uh, incentivizing it. And that's something which we are trying to push now, not only through Melon, but through my other extracurricular activities uh, in our efforts to stir this startup ecosystem, which is happening at the moment, especially in Sofia, but hopefully in Bulgogorod and other cities. It's, it's, uh, it's very funny and it's very nice. So <coughs> that's what I have to say. Uh, if you want, you can interrupt. Uh, if you want, you can let Peter uh, speak his uh, presentation as well. And then we can chat a little bit more. Okay. <clears throat> Hello. So uh, my name is Peter, for those of you who don't know me. I'm also pleasantly surprised that there are so many of you here. It's because you probably heard that Kum is so handsome. Uh, so now for something completely different, because I have effects and pictures in my presentation, mostly. Um, I will be talking about... Um, uh, uh, this May, it was my 10th anniversary at Mellon, so I used that opportunity to start thinking about stuff, including uh, what uh, Kuhn was talking about, how we came where we came and uh, what lessons we can draw from our own experience. And I shared it with colleagues in company and I went to a few uh, conferences and uh, you meet all sorts of people and you gather some sort of experience, startup uh, people, friends around you who uh, start their own companies, you talk to them. And uh, I just want to share, and you read stuff online and books and so on. So this is like my 20 minute, how should I say, congestion of what I think is maybe most relevant for, for you guys right now. So here we go. So <clears throat> first, what was the difference? What is the difference be between what uh, Kum was talking about and your situation right now as potential entrepreneurs? Uh, by the way, how many of you are thinking about starting their own business after graduating? Cool. That's very nice, 40%, 41, 42, that's uh, cool. So uh, the difference is, is, uh, uh, is the following, like w when uh, we were actually at the end of this first wave, but when you think about, you probably have heard uh, success stories like Elvin Guri, who is now like a multi, 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 multi millionaire. Uh, he started his company in Bulgaria, Jet Finance at that time, sold it for, uh, for a lot of money and uh, so on. And this was back in like 96, 97, 98. Back then, as you know, <coughs> probably Bulgaria was still a developing democracy and uh, free market economy and so, and uh, all, all, all of the stuff that was already perhaps natural in uh, Western Europe and United States wasn't happening here. So this was sort of the advantage. You, you had this, like, uh, this is what I like to say, that in the land of the blind, the one-eyed uh, man is the king. So one-eyed king. Um, uh, because uh, uh, having graduated from AUBG, you were, this is what uh, Kuma was talking about, the mindset and the culture. You are, or you are uh, more exposed to this kind of thinking than, than you probably think you are. It is only when you go, you probably have friends in other universities, they all probably think that you're stuck up before you because you're in the uh, <laughs> expensive university and you think that they are far behind because you're, uh, you know, talking English. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, but back then the difference was even, even more drastic. I mean, this was, the university was like six, seven years old and there was lots of enthusiasm and all, all of this stuff was happening so so all these people that that had successful startups then uh, including ourselves I guess because back then there were probably like two three four web and multimedia studios and in, in Sofia right now they're probably 50 between 50 and 100 uh, so uh, even having worked we had uh, the opportunity to work in the multimedia lab you know we had the opportunity to work with the 3d software and uh, do video editing for our owners in 2000 and 2001 I think we started uh, even though it took a long time to render and stuff today you just put the camera plug it into the computer and you can edit like in five minutes we used VHS tapes but anyway uh, <clears throat> So all this stuff, all this stuff really made people, uh, you know, stick out in a way and it, it was a turmoil and you had a huge advantage. Right now, the world is a bit different. It's in color because 90s were black and white. <coughs> and uh, 
you have uh, lots of information people feel you know you have this free developed economy everybody has lots of opportunities and you know uh, you probably see more you know uh, startups around you happening and successful companies as an example so the world seems kind of nicer but there is also danger because these people are in, in a bubble uh, and you've heard probably about the dot-com bubble that happened uh, at the end of the 90s or beginning of this century, and uh, uh, which is not, uh, <coughs> how should I say, uh, bad for people who start companies, but it's uh, bad for the people who invest in them. And there's a sort of a similar situation happening right now in those, you know, that, uh, uh, what was it, Historia uh, Magistra Vitae in Latin, uh, <laughs> that history is uh, the, the, the teacher of... of uh, of life, uh, and when you when you you have all these examples that that have already happened, you have internet now, which is except you know you have it on your mobile phone. Somebody asks you a question, you go to Wikipedia or you Google it, or you find a YouTube video to play based on any song in the world, basically, or whatever you want. So you have all this information, which di di didn't happen then. So right now, there's basically no excuse not to be informed. So it's a very good time uh, <clears throat> to be to live in than to be young. And the, the advantage of being young is that, as Krum said, you can fail several times and not, you know, have to move your family out to the street or something. So it's a good time, but it also needs, you also need to be wise to think about things like the, the bubble that happened before and so on, so that you don't repeat the same mistakes that happened. So <coughs> when you, <coughs> sorry, when you start thinking about business, usually what people say, or what I've heard them say, is that you need uh, two things. The first thing is that you need the so-called bells and whistles, uh, which means that you need to have this uh, or wow effect. You have, need, need to have this idea which is going to be, uh, let's say, new, that is going to change stuff, and it's going to change stuff in such a way that everybody after you will do things differently. Like the iPhone is the classic example. You know, after the iPhone, all the phones started looking like the iPhone. Another example is uh, the high jump. You know that they used to uh, 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 the high jump was something like this. You know, and they they did like meter sixty, meter seventy, and then this crazy guy jumped like they jump now, like over the back. And uh, they, they had only sand, they didn't have the, <laughs> the soft stuff, so he actually broke his back. But uh, uh, after that happened, everybody started jumping, you know, in a different way. So you need to have this sort of, like, an idea which, which works. Uh, 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 another important thing to, m to mention here is that uh, it's not that easy, of course, to be original nowadays. There's probably an anything that you think of already exists, but it doesn't mean that you won't be more successful. I mean, Google wasn't the first search engine. Uh, Internet Explorer was not the first browser, uh, and so on. Uh, Right. So the, the second thing that you need is reach. So basically, you, you are some small spot somewhere with a really great idea. So how do you spread it all over? It doesn't have to be the world. Ideally, it is the world and Mars. Uh, but uh, you can you know, define your market as Bulgaria or your hometown. I know there are guys here who are trying to do something for Blagojevgrad, restaurant business, and so on. So uh, uh, you need reach, right? So you, you need to find a way how to, how to spread your idea to all those people. And from what I've heard, there's basically just two ways to do it, uh, roughly. One is through marketing, which you're all probably learning about, and the social, this includes the social media and so on, and the classical marketing, like through all the media that you can think of. And the other is networking, which is uh, going, meeting people, including when, when we come here, we're also networking with you. I mean, it's useful for us to know. We have two people here in this room who are working in our company uh, now, I guess, thanks to you know, they know, them knowing us and so on. Uh, so you need to network, uh, and uh, I'm, how should I say, when I go to conferences, I'm not, I'm not a really good salesperson, like the elevator pitch and stuff like that. I'm not good at that. But uh, I keep all the business cards. I'm relatively good at writing emails. So what I do is write emails to people afterwards, and then they start like, liking me after, uh, <laughs> after they met me. So, uh, so networking is important. And uh, uh, what I'm trying to say is that even though you feel uncomfortable sometimes doing it, and not everybody is a born salesperson, uh, just having the contact with that person is, is useful. 
so again, this is what you would basically be told that you need to be successful. This is the bells and whistles and, and the reach. And uh, from our experience at Mellon, there is one third thing which uh, I think is also important. Uh, okay, I skip this. Uh, this is the, the, the process. Uh, <clears throat> we were, how should I say, we have, uh, at Mellon, we have lots of ideas. I mean, uh, probably every week we have two or three ideas about let's build this kind of app or let's build this, wouldn't this be great, you know? And, and another person says, yeah, yeah, it's great, but nothing really happens uh, afterwards. And uh, it, in my mind, the, the chances of uh, a good idea really, you know, floating to the top and actually happening is to have a process where you sort of uh, uh, reiterate your ideas and, and just start doing it. And I'll talk about this later. So this is, uh, has anybody he here read the book, L uh, The Lean Startup? No, but we are having this as a reference textbook. Yes. Everybody who raised their hand, yes, everybody who raised their hand about being an entrepreneur should read it. It's not a long book. Uh, at this, and the author of the book uh, is, in a way, the author of this. I mean, he stole it from Agile Development and adapted it a little bit, but it's more or less this. And uh, the, the, the thing is that you, you have your idea, and this is mostly for software startups, but you can adapt it to pretty much any product or service. Then you, you build it. Right, and then you measure it. So, so you need to have a, a quick, uh, how should I, um, what was it called, a proof of concept, right? And uh, some people say it's just easy enough to make a website, to have a, a, you know, a paragraph describing your idea and to have a like button or something underneath so that people say if they're okay with it. And then you just pay, say, $20, $30 per month for Google AdWords. Uh, so that people come to that website, and if if you don't see a really good, how should I say, uh, response, it means that your idea may not be. So this is like the simplest, how should I say, way of uh, proving your concept, and not everybody's doing it understandably, but we uh, are now starting to do something in our company, a, a new sort of like family of uh, applications, and uh, we built one, which we see, uh, you know, uh, potential in and, and right now we are trying to enter the measure phase uh, uh, to see, you know, what, what actual potential it has and whether we should continue, right? And then when you measure the data, of course, this is what I already said, is that you learn basically from that data. So if you're missing, if you're missing the measure, you, you, you probably, the, the, the chance of failing is much greater, you know. What, what was it that uh, failing to plan is planning to fail, right? So uh, this is something that it, it, it's useful for you to keep in mind and because you don't have that much time to talk about and trying to find all this short stuff. And uh, the previous slide that I skipped, this is also from, uh, from the book. You'll find it there. This is like, uh, um, what, what's it called, like a, a sheet uh, which you should fill in any time that you have an idea just to validate it, you know. So you start like with your unique value proposition which is here and then uh, you have like problems and solutions. Uh, like this guy at the conference was giving an example that like he's a good app developer and his friend came to him and he said, look, we have to, I have this great idea, you know, you really come and you should talk, whatever. And, he was very busy, but he said, okay, he's my friend, I'll go. And his friend told him, look, I have this amazing idea, like you do like this with your phone, and then you hear the sound of a banana like splatting on a, on a wall, and then you can like see the banana, you know, splashed on the wall. So he's like, what do you say? He's like, you know, not, not such a good idea. I mean, maybe it will be fun, but what is the problem that it's solving, right? So you, when, when you're trying to think of an idea, you should always try, start like, okay, I have this problem or this, there's uh, this and this niche in the market and I can solve it in that in such a way. I'm already talking too much. You can find this, just Google Lean Canvas or Lean Startup and so you can read a lot about it and it's probably more eloquently said than I'll be able to do right now. The, my favorite thing, which I was talking about a few weeks ago here also, so I'm sorry that I'm repeating myself to some of the people, but uh, this is uh, a, a bit of a different perspective, again, that I'm talking from experience. This is what, why you don't do things. This is why you don't start doing things. Uh, there is a, 
we have the well-known psychological phenomenon, which is called self-hindering, where uh, people, where basically the, the uh, premise is that when you're not doing something, you're, you're, you're setting uh, barriers for yourself subconsciously. So uh, the classic example that I always use is like people who get really uh, drunk uh, the night before uh, going to work so that next day they will have an excuse not to work. I mean, they don't do this on purpose, but it, they say that the reason, you know, really uh, deep inside is that. And there's lots of other examples. And, and when you start realizing this and when you start thinking about thinking, uh, you, it is easier for you to jump over these barriers. Anyway, so uh, these are uh, four groups of uh, uh, reasons why we don't do things, which I think is uh, all-encompassing. Right. So the first thing is that you do not know what to do, like you don't have an idea. Uh, uh, two things I want to say about this is first that I think that everybody, every single person can have an idea. I'm sure that everybody here in this room has at least one uh, idea of uh, what they could do as a business or not necessarily can be an NGO or whatever. Uh, so I think that every, every person is creative and uh, it's been proven even now scientifically that uh, creativity is not something that you're born with because there's lots of people who say, look, I'm not you know, that creative. Look how that guy is drawing or playing the guitar or whatever. This is not the case. Like any, anybody can develop this kind of creativity. And um, there's basically two types, uh, how you can, uh, two ways that you can come to a, 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 an idea. One is analytical, which is where you gather all your facts and you read through them, you learn them, and you step by step sort of build towards the conclusion. And the other is insight, which is the real creative stuff. And insight actually comes, I'll try to put it shortly, when you, when you delve really deep into a subject and you sort of hit a wall and you don't know really how to solve the problem, and then you have the aha uh -huh moment. So uh, uh, the, the creative, how should I say, uh, the, the, cr the creative uh, spark is the insight. And uh, it's been proven that this is how it can be sort of induced and with practice you can become better and, uh, and so on. But uh, it doesn't happen, you know, sometimes it can happen by, you know, uh, by accident, but very rarely. And this is why you know, Louis Pasteur, I think, said that uh, the chance favors the prepared mind. So you may think that some people are luckier than others, like uh, Steve Jobs or so on, but it, it, it is uh, their success and their ideas came from them being very uh, well prepared and informed about what they were thinking about. Uh, so uh, the other reason why you may not know what to do is because you're simply not thinking about it. This is something that we, from what we suffer from time to time, is that you just get so uh, involved with uh, everyday stuff that you're not basically thinking about like what, what can we do differently or uh, what, what is the next thing that we want to do. So again, here's where, where having partners and friends, you know, having to push you asking you stuff, you know, one, one month one guy may be more active the next month another guy, so we sort of try to push ourselves and I think it has an effect. The second reason is how you want to do it. So how do you, how do you, you don't know how, you have this great idea but you don't know how to get there, right? Uh, for this, uh, you have, again, friends, you have mentors, this, uh, if you uh, get an uh, investor, uh, they usually the venture capitalists they also work as your mentors right because they have a vested interest in your in your idea your company so there's a lots of people and as I said you have the internet now so again there is really no excuse of of not knowing how to do this right now if you want to build a, a, a satellite and that crew was just talking to me earlier I mean you can find a way uh, instructions how to how to launch a small satellite probably on the internet so and anything right now is available on the web so uh, if you're saying to yourself, like, look, I have this great idea, but I really don't know how to implement it, you're hindering yourself uh, from reaching the goal. The third thing is that you don't have the resources. So you, so you know how to build that satellite, but you don't have the money and so on. Or you don't have a friend who's a programmer uh, and, and so on. Uh, uh, this is again, if you're saying this to yourself, this is your, your uh, implying uh, hindrances on yourself because uh, there's always a way and uh, especially now in Bulgaria, which uh, Krum shortly mentioned his extracurricular activities is acting, uh, he's helping uh, two venture, uh, it's venture funds. Or, 
accelerator. Yeah. Accelerators who are now two in Bulgaria, one has 12 million, the other one has 9 million. Yeah, and uh, so basically the doors are open, you know, and, and uh, it's really uh, the environment in Bulgaria is very stirred up. Uh, they had, one of the uh, funds had 300 uh, applicants, there are now 25 finalists and 10 to 12 uh, companies will get funding. Yes. Eleven is going to work with our program. Uh, they are going I suppose. To, yeah, they are going to take one of our companies to work with their development program. Ideal. Very good. So this is one of the funds that you were referring to. Yeah, yeah. Eleven is one. The other one is Launch Hub. Uh, there's a angel investors. Uh, there's uh, just good uh, old-fashioned investors. You know, guys that you can meet by networking and so on. So. Uh, um, yeah, I forgot to say. We start with no money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nothing. Why would get the computer? Yeah, and you get the key to the multimedia. <laughs> no, Mostuna is Mostuna. Mostuna is really uh, as uh, how should I say? Because a lot of people take him as a very how should I say? He who ha who guy, uh, which he is, but he's also very resourceful. I mean, uh, he he he's. I mean, he will never in his life have this problem uh, because he he just does it. You know, so. Yeah, it can be overwhelming at times, but yeah. So uh, again, uh, this is the third uh, group of, of, uh, of issues, which is where you just don't say, okay, I know how to do it, I know what to do it, but I just don't have the money or the cash or the whatever, All right? And the, first, the fourth one is fear. This is from Psycho by Hitchcock. And uh, 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 it is ju just you telling yourself, what if I fail? What if, you know, people laugh at me? What if, you know, I spend six months of my life and had nothing to, you know, and I'm worse off than I am right now? And uh, uh, for me, for example, this, is, this has always been the biggest uh, hindrance. Uh, thank God I had uh, the, how should I say, I've been lucky enough to be recruited by the guys before I, uh, I graduated and then I didn't have to think about like what am I going to do. I always wanted to be a part of something like Melon, you know, but I, I, I would have never had the guts to do it on my own. I'm completely honest here. So, uh, so fear is not a, 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 how should I, not to be underestimated by any means, but again, it's friends, it's partners, you're young, you have, you know, uh, from your perspective, you know, you, you think that being a, a graduate and being a, a senior or super senior, if you've been here for five years, <laughs> and you, you think you're at the top of the world and, and your ego sort of tells you, look, I have, and this was my, like I had a, a good GPA, I had all sorts of uh, diplomas and stuff, and I was like, look, I cannot just uh, graduate and, and not be a success like what are people going to think about me this was very wrong this was the mistake that I made and and uh, I, it's not that I didn't have ideas it's not that I didn't know how to do them I, I would have found the resources to do them but I was just afraid of failing right and again now in uh, in in the rearview mirror you know I, I uh, sort of see that this was a mistake which I was putting on myself because I didn't have really that much to lose then uh, and I wasn't thinking that in, in five and ten years time when I have a wife and a daughter uh, and that I would probably you know never be able to and go back uh, in time and changes. Do you sometimes dream of like taking an exam in high school and you're not prepared? Do you have this? Like your old high school? Uh, this is this is you telling yourself like that you, you're thinking like I'll, I'll probably go back in time. It's like you you were, uh, how should I say, subconscious not being uh, ready to take uh, the past away and just to think about the future, right? Because you always think, okay, uh, you have this like sort of feeling I'm going to be in high school again. I'm going to be a, a freshman again. You're never going to be freshman again. You're never going to be in the position that you are again ever. Right, things only get more complicated, yeah. which is <laughs> yeah, no, but isn't it a positive thing? Right, it's a positive, it's a very positive thing, and 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 this is a really good example. Like when you're when you're uh, thinking about thinking, like really try to try to every time you catch yourself, uh, look, uh, I'm not going to study for the exam or something. Try to think, why are you not going to do it? Right. Because, you know, <laughs> okay, uh, these are, uh, 
uh, I, I will, what's the time? Overdue. I'm overdue. Yes, yes. Uh, okay. I, these, these were supposed to come up uh, in 30 seconds one by one while we're having a Q&A session, uh, but this is the old version of PowerPoint, so it's not working. Uh, so these are 13 things, 13 is just the random number, but these are the things that I could sort of short wisdoms that I think uh, I, I keep in my mind now and that help me, uh, how should I say, uh, be happier and maybe uh, make better decisions, but in 10 years' time, I might change them. Uh, so, uh, um, okay, ju ju just quickly, as Krum said, the first one, you cannot accomplish things on your own. Like, very, very few people, even even tennis players uh, uh, have a huge team be uh, behind and preparing them and so on. So you cannot, you cannot uh, accomplish uh, an anything significant, I think, on, on your own, so you should uh, think about who you want to have around you. Uh, people change, but uh, not too much, most for the best. This is from, from our colleagues in the company and from friends I have uh, from university and high school. I mean, uh, you, you, people discover bad traits in themselves and nobody, and everybody wants to be a better person, right? So, so people, uh, because say, you know, the wolf in sheep's clothing and stuff like that, I mean, people do change and I, I've seen people really change, and unless there were some extreme circumstances, like really unfortunate circumstances, they only change for the better because of themselves, right? Never underestimate anyone. This one I learned in ABG. Uh, when you go around corridors, we were 600 people then, and you're probably, you're now twice that the size, uh, and you see many people on the corridor who you have prejudice about. You say, this guy is an idiot, this guy is from this and that country, so he must be like this and that. This is a huge mistake. Uh, uh, because uh, I cannot uh, count the number of hundreds of times that I've been surprised by people, both in AUBG, outside AUBG, and so on. So don't make this mistake. Treat people with respect. Um, there are days, and, and there are days for, uh, for everyone. Uh, so everybody, this I learned from a children's book, uh, which said that uh, uh, kids have the right to be in a bad mood. Because we always think the kids are supposed to be happy and laughing and so on, and when they start crying, there's something wrong or they're just trying to make your life difficult. The thing is that every single person in the world just sometimes has a bad day. And when you recognize this in them, it doesn't mean that they're every day such a, a hole. Uh, they are just having probably a bad day. So try to keep that in mind. Uh, the, the next one is uh, maybe my favorite, or one of the favorites, is that uh, whatever somebody tells you, like I'm telling you now, there's probably somebody somewhere in the world who can uh, just as easily, uh, you know, uh, defend the quite the opposite saying, which is not no less true. So there's always two signs to every coin. Right, and this you should start doing now. Uh, is that you should write down everything. You, uh, as much as you think your memory is far less than perfect, unless you're a savant, but even that is very unpleasant. So uh, write down tasks, notes, ideas, everything. I have on my desktop here, I have like seven or eight uh, text files. When you just open a new notepad, start writing, and uh, later you, when you come back, you won't be, anyway, you know what I mean. Being nice is okay. Uh, there are, there, uh, there, I, I mean, I've seen examples of people who are achieving same results. One was, you know, really being a nice guy and talking to people and in a nice way, and the other one was uh, pretty, pretty bitchy about it and, uh, and uh, didn't make any difference. And I, I mean, because some, some people think that this kind of difference in style has an effect. It does, but I don't think it has a, a huge effect on the, on the bottom line. I mean, uh, it's not about being pushy or being too nice. It's about caring about the process and uh, uh, thinking about the deadline and the respect and, and so on. So there is no rewards or benefits for being, you know, a bad guy. You know, because my, uh, like my mother-in-law tells me, like, you're a boss, now people are going to start hating you. Which, you know, is the old kind of thinking. <clears throat> be prepared. 
whatever you do, uh, when you go to a class or when you're doing a presentation or uh, you're uh, going for a concert or you're uh, uh, do, you know, starting, trying to in, uh, attract investors, you should be prepared. Uh, many people think that they're so smart that they can just come and talk and be really you know, informative and funny at the same time and really charming and so on. Uh, this doesn't happen uh, on its own, right? So, so anything you do, anything you do, you should always be prepared, right? You get your information straight, you get, how should I say, you have to think about it and so on. Uh, sorry, um, know when to say no, this is time management thing. Many people will come to you and ask you for stuff to do and to help them out. Right now you have lots of time. Trust me, you have lots of time. Uh, uh, you won't have as much time later on, for sure. And, and the, the sooner you, you realize this, the, the better for you. I mean, the, how should I say? Uh, just uh, uh, either delegating or saying, I'll leave this for later is, is a very useful, useful thing. Uh, everything depends on you. This is a classic one where you just, you know, if you don't do it, like if you don't think about why you don't do things and so on, nobody's going to do it for you. Right? And this is actually a quote that Krum often says that everything depends on us. This was like a mission statement before we had a mission statement. Uh, great things are achieved by doing small things every day. So you do not expect to wake up one morning, go out on the street and become you know, the president of the world or whatever. I mean, you, you have to do small things, really boring things. Like Krum said, it's a marathon, it's not a sprint. You have to do small things every day to one day achieve greatness. Right? And the last one, uh, actually, this is a citation from uh, Google's rules, uh, which where they say that you should do, this is for companies, but also for uh, people. Uh, when you're doing a company, try not to do many things at once. This, I think, is what we have learned and starting started to act on uh, uh, recently, that, that you should really I mean, our niche has always been services, but now that we're starting to expand into products, we did, we have like 50 mobile applications, we have learning, we had components and so on, and uh, none of these we were actually really concentrating on. So, so find one thing which later when you do that elevator pitch uh, on, a, on a conference or something, you, you should really how should I say, be able to say, this is what I really, really do well. And it's not about uh, being uh, overconfident or very full of yourself. It's, it's being uh, confident just the right amount and for, for the right reasons. So they, keep this in mind when you think about your company, that you don't have to have hundreds of features. Google is the perfect example. I mean, it's the perfect user experience and, and everything when you go to the google.com, right? You just have something, you write some words, you press, there are two buttons, but you press one button and, and it works. This is how they became, this is why they have this in their rules even today. Sorry, taking so long. <laughs> Questions, please. This is either a very bad or a very good sign. First one was the multimedia presentation of Internet. It was uh, it was a sales presentation, a lot of video, a lot of animations, a lot of interviews. Uh, yes, feel free, spam us, call us uh, if you have questions. Uh, we use our real names on Facebook, this is what they always say. Uh, just ignore. And we, we did it video, not flash. Flash was really, really in the days. Uh, we did a lot of pictures, collages and some interviews with internet management. So we compiled something like who they are, what they do, what they sell, and why they are the best. And 3D. A lot of 3D. Yeah, the yeah it, it took 24 hours to render. Yeah. It was a how long? Like seven seconds rotating the wall. Yeah. And that's, actually, it started a while earlier when we did a simpler PowerPoint presentation for much smaller, but they like, they said, we need, we need something, we need something. We 
choose the real, the real host project, we choose and you had CDs, us. these were a big hit, like CDs that were in the uh, shape business of business a card. business card. Yeah. So it really it Again, uh, Melon didn't start like adventure. Melon started like three separate companies. All of this I come from adventure. So that's I don't want you to, to get the wrong idea of how Melon started. That's how adventure started. Weblink started with this Paris project for real estate. <laughs> January 31st, 2001, uh, the motivator was the Blue Ventures guys who wanted to really organize the equity. Is it really hard? Is it really hard? Now it's, no, no, it's easy. It was easier than ever. It took a month then uh, and 5,000 level capital, uh, which we didn't have, but Blue Ventures <laughs> gave us. And then uh, it takes 50 level, 200 level with all fees now. Two, three days, so it's you can do it online. Uh, I'm, I'm yeah, we, we have people who do this. How big is your company nowadays? Get all us and is it probably trading? It's not. Uh, it's it's not big. It's not rich. It's, it's not richer. <laughs> it's not richest. We've seen bigger companies, but the idea here is when you when you get to a level, there is always. A whole new sea of other bigger companies, which motivate you or uh, make you feel small. We are 12 years old, we are 150 people. And uh, we are an AD, if that makes any sense. But we are a JSC joint stock company. Yes. In this new technological world, do you think uh, how much place do you think there is for people? No. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know how to I don't know how to write a single line. He's a CEO of my company. <laughs> I never I never, I never he expected to be. He's a decent designer. I was wears glasses. Uh, uh, I think that now, as I said, there is no excuse. I mean, there is a guy who graduated in. Graduate JMC only, so this tells you what. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, he, he learned himself how to uh, build a website. He started with a WordPress website, then he started doing PHP stuff, mm -hmm. and he built an online uh, store for himself. And it's not a huge business, but he found a way to do it. And uh, I mean, WordPress right now. Like 17% of all, do you know what WordPress is? Yes. It's 17% of all websites in the world are made by WordPress. And it's like opening, uh, you know, the set you know. So, uh, so to build a website, that's it. And now for mobile applications, uh, there's so many courses. There's, I mean, even the companies like Apple has a really good program. And uh, Google has always been good with educating people with, you know, who are trying to get started and uh, if you want to, how should I say, if you think that it's going to be effortless, no. Uh, this is when you start realizing that learning math in high school wasn't such a bad idea <laughs> and stuff like that, but... He's a course major, I have Yeah, I'm a course major, <laughs> math major. <so. laughs> you don't need to know how to code. If you, if you know that you're good at something or if you know that you want to do something, you can always find the resources by just persuading them to join you. Whether it's money, people, or whatever. <laughs> or be lucky enough to, to have them around you, to be friends. But uh, you don't need to learn how to write this complex course. So if you have a follow up. Do you, do you feel like you have strict competition in your field? Do you participate in the talent. Sorry. Only for talent. At the moment, I see uh, that the demand for for software, the demand for technology is, I, I, I see it, I don't have numbers to support, I see the demand is bigger than the supply, so there is a lack of equilibrium if you, I saw the direct Lynch, there is this uh, over demand, so there is always room for more, especially good guys who know how to deliver good software, no matter in which field, in which vertical. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah it, it, it helps if you you have the chance to take some programming courses. <laughs> <laughs> no, really. no I'm, I'm serious about it. Even the basic stuff, right? 
Yeah, it was Tom Wilson. He was teaching me <coughs> and he'll be, he'll be one of the oh. mm -hmm. the best of us. I'm sorry. So, okay, actually, just, yeah. like, we have time. Um, yeah, we, we so can stay here for longer. This is one of the activities mobile, the mobile applications. <laughs> it's basically doesn't do that with people. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, for me, it's like I consider the market for them, them like being developed and it's like, would you consider an opportunity for substituting it, like use of paper in day-to-day -day operations or that with like applications? For example, for example GPS, sign-up sheets, like functions and stuff. Would you find the market attractive for such applications? To get rid of the paper-based processes completely. Uh, it's going to happen sooner or later, but I, I don't think it will be in our lifetime. <laughs> uh, I think that paper is still the most secure <laughs> uh, way of, of storing data. Uh, that's one thing. And, uh, I don't know, there's just so, so much bureaucracy. So, but like, I'm not sure if you've heard there is this, uh, like, Terry Police has a website, and this was like the first e government thing you can make. <laughs> It was done by a guy who's not even in government, like he didn't grow uh, And uh, now the site is done because the government is not supporting it. Uh, E-government takes tens of years, like the, the, the most, I think, advanced e-government in Europe right now is Estonia. Uh, they are now at, I think, 87% of uh, adoption, I think. I, like it's around 90% adoption of processes, like it includes voting and stuff like that. It's a really small country. Like, Several million people, and when when you think about uh, things uh, like Germany or the United States and so on, I, I don't think uh, you can how should I say <laughs> completely erase paper forever. I don't think it's going to come soon. You have electronic signatures, signatures, but these are just really small steps, necessary steps, but really we're very far away from getting rid of paper. Well, but there is room, of course. Yes. Yes, I mean, the, this is the direction, this is what happens. And if you have that idea, you know, it, again, you have the bells and whistles, right? But you need to have the reach as well. So, selling that idea to the world is going to be the challenge. Uh, so, we found this. We were talking about classes, of course, a couple of minutes ago. Have you ever taken any classes in strategic management or learning entrepreneurship? I did, uh, I did manage no, no, no. strategic management, but it was part of the work process. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, what, what's an interesting thing about this course <clears throat> is that back then I was thinking this vision, vision, strategy team is first. It's not. Uh, but maybe you need to learn it the hard way. Uh, I was really making fun of these things. I said they were stupid, they were meaningless, no sense. Not <coughs> Just follow up. We didn't have any, anything at the premiership. What about after you graduated from the mm, I'm stupid, but. <laughs> 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 Very simple people. Uh, I haven't <laughs> taken ever a business course of any kind. Uh, and I, I'm sorry. <laughs> Of that decision, uh, and I, how should I say, uh, even now, like I, one of my business guys, because I have two friends, one of them says marketing manager, and uh, I mean, I don't have any idea. I mean, uh, everything I have to learn, like I could really read the, the textbooks that my friends were reading back like in the days when I was doing easy math, so. Uh, so I regret that. Uh, but then you have other examples of college dropouts, you know, being the most successful business people in the world. So who knows? Uh, I, I think that information is never bad, and I think that taking courses is not so much on the curriculum. You have online courses at Coursera right now, and so on. What is uh, the value, the added value that the university has is talking about people, you're basically networking, you're uh, getting different points of view. And, uh, and, uh, what I always say is that AUBG uh, is a very condemned place in terms of time and space because so many things happen in a short time, like you probably have four or five things you do every day, maybe range from you know, debate club to all the to environment, taking 
process and so on. So in terms of time, you have this so many things that are happening in the space, like you run into each other probably several times per day, and professors and whatnot, and local guys from Oberberg, uh, it's a, I think it's a very fertile environment for generating ideas and friendships and partnerships and so on. So this you cannot, how should I say, it's good. I mean, you can take whatever courses uh, you like, and it's definitely good. Wisely, but the biggest added value that you get, and this is probably even what the parents talk to when they come to hear is that you get this kind of become part of this kind of mindset and network. Uh, well, how did Melvin or the other small companies in the beginning uh, boosted sales when the companies were wildly unpopular? I mean, you did first of all the major project. And then still, you work. We we are well in popular development. Depends on how you compare us to uh, not a global hard drive. Or uh, Tedrick. <laughs> yes, <laughs> uh, but uh, that's connected to the thing I was referring to in the long term perspective. Uh, so we, we were happy to, to have this uh, approach to clients like. It is really, really important to leave an impression to get the client care. Then the client sales uh, and uh, we, we still don't have sales team per se. We don't have this. Uh, it's me, Ivo, and a few other guys from the management. Everybody. Uh, who is yeah, sales in terms of opening the door? Uh, it's sales is a longer process. Like you need to write the offer, play the tender, uh, win uh, against the competition. That that's happening. We have people for that. But we don't have sales, sales in terms of knock on the door, knock on the look what, what I've got there. Customers, <laughs> no, uh, we don't do that. And, uh, and it, it, it was a slow, slow process. Of, uh, it's, it's a spiral, a positive spiral. Like we have one good customer, he tells two other guys. We have one happy customer, he tells a hundred other guys. So uh, you need to, to approach this with, with this long term thinking. If I have mostly happy customers, sales will out to happen. Uh, that's our case. So, uh, of course, if you put more aggressive marketing effort, if you, if you have this product that you actually build once and sell a, a thousand times, then it's different. It's more about marketing, not sales. But yes, it, it includes sales as well. So, in the beginning, it was that. You have one, two, three uh, projects, clients, you have friends, you have uh, network, you have AOBG guys, um, you just meet them, you talk to them what you do, you check with them, you, and, and also you, you need to remember that sales is not very rewarding. Most of the times you get the no, and some of the times you get the yes. So uh, <laughs> I, I used to joke this, it's the most unhappy thing is when you go on a competition and you, you end up second. That's like, you've been all, all, all the way, you, you invested all the effort like the one that got it. Only that you just don't get it. So it's, it's, it's a nice experience. <laughs> but yeah, uh, it happened slow, little by little. Because the IT environment is so dynamic, how do you choose which opportunity and technologies to uh, focus on? And uh, in the cloud computing area, do you have any software or any projects developing right now? I'm sorry, but your voice is just like you would. Um, you can yeah, yeah. send my yeah, calling cool. vows. I was about to say, it should be a radio Just, just please ask me the question. You should have like a radio talk show, but like at 1 a.m. When <laughs> ladies come back to their rooms and they're like... <laughs> <laughs> Which opportunity do you focus on? Like, because there are so many technologies. In there. Well, I don't know, but I know that the less is better. Focus actually is focus is, is good. You, you, you get better at one thing, and uh, people hate if you tell them that you do a lot of things. And we don't do a lot of things, but um, you really need to choose one or three of these in order to talk to someone. If you, if you talk to him about more, then you just dilute the conversation to something that actually leaves no impression. But the same is with technologies. Uh, now, we, we've been 
In terms of technologies like Weblank, uh, Melon, Tech, the first startup, uh, the guys from Paris, like the, the guys from Weblank, they were Microsoft guys. Uh, they, they, they endorsed Microsoft as, a, as an ecosystem. So you choose an ecosystem, it's not a technology, it's like an ecosystem. And then, <coughs> for the years when we were mostly web, uh, it was really a, a question, we call it a religious question, whether you choose Microsoft or PHP or whatever else. Uh, all technologies do uh, the job. It's, it's the one that you are better or faster, uh, you are more confident, you have more people to help you with. Uh, that's how, that's how, mostly the activity. And then in the merger uh, time of 2008, we were gained. Uh, we decided that we need to, to diversify from Symbian, which was a very, very good idea nowadays, when we look at it from today. Uh, and also BlackBerry, and also Windows, and also iOS. So um, that's actually how we became probably the first and I think one of the largest mobile companies in Bulgaria. Now there are a lot, and uh, mobile is more and more, uh, but we were fast. And there, it's always uh, just to add this, like uh, the old rule of like follow the money is really true. Uh, I mean, uh, you cannot. You may be a big fan of uh, writing in Haxe, for example, which is now a new cross-platform solution. If you're a programmer, you want to check it out, Haxe.org. But nobody in the world, when he comes to you as a client, if you tell him like there is this thing that I want to you know, share, he's like, Let, let's just stick to gap or accelerator or something and uh, you are not it's hard to be the trend center you know, the trend center is like Microsoft uh, Steve Jobs single-handedly killed Flash which I hate him for only for that, but that too. Uh, so uh, you're not the trend center so you basically it's reactive uh, and another good example is like HTML5 just they sent some guys article about how far still HTML5 has to go and how all this hype, you know, does not uh, sum up to uh, a really, really cool platform that you can write on. It's still just a hype. It had like four or five years to start doing what some other platforms have been doing for uh, years before. So you, you get to react. You don't sit down and say like, okay, what are we going to do? That's what the Earth technology is. Why are you asking that question? Do you have a decision to make? Yeah, I'm very interested. In which, which, which field? Mobile? mobile? Um, well, I'm focusing mostly in like cloud computing and mobile. I'm trying to like, figure out which... We have cloud computing. Uh, really cool, uh, <laughs> uh, there's a, a site called Live... Um, what was it? Restaurant? What is it called? Live Movements. Live Movements. Uh, Book a Table. Book a Table. Book a Table. Uh, which is, I think, the second most popular. Uh, restaurant uh, booking uh, <coughs> platform in Europe, unless I know. And, uh, and they have completely moved to the cloud, and like, we have uh, a team like that's been working on it, like most of the work was uh, connected to that. Uh, if you have concrete questions, uh, you can drop an email, I can get you in touch with the guy so that he answers some of the questions. I'm not saying that he'll answer the next day, but eventually he can. The guideline would be choose the more popular office. It will help you find people who know it better and faster and easier. And hire new guys that want to adopt it more easily because people would normally choose the popular technology so that it's easier for them to find each other. And also popular technologies tend to get more support in bigger communities so they improve better and faster. Well, with time some of them become obsolete so you have to get used to find it to find the street. So, but yeah. even if you make a mistake, it's you try the bigger guys in the world. I think we have uh, just time to uh, uh, to answer a couple of additional yeah, questions. Yeah, I mean, and we, we don't. Wrap it up. I mean, yes. If to there are two more questions, if you have four. Let's uh, raise hands. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then, the situation is helping. Thank God. This program is brought to you by AUBG Talks. For more, please visit us at aubg.bg talks.